up and down the empirical rule. I am jumping a little bit far in 3.2, but I think it's important that you, you know, know the empirical rule and go ahead and write it down before we even get started. Because today the two things that you need to learn are mean and standard deviation, which you already know the mean. So you should have mo most of 3.1 homework done. I did see one question sent in homework. Um, I'll probably go over it Thursday if that's OK, because I don't have a bunch of questions uh, and it's not a test question per se. Um, so if you don't mind, I'll probably wait and go over that Thursday. So. Between two standard deviations, which is at 95%, that's called normal. OK, so that 95%, that second level right there, you would call that normal. And out between the second standard deviation and third standard deviation at 2.35, 2.35 on both sides, that's called unusual. And then the third standard deviation outside the third standard deviation, that's called outliers. That's your Michael Jordans and your Tom Brady's and your Tiger Woods. You know, they're, they're, they're your six foot second grader, your 1800 SAT or people that, you know, you know, go outside the norm. OK, so those are your outliers. Now, what your goal is, is to produce numbers on the bottom. That's your goal, whether it is with the data that you've been given or whether you change something to a Z-score. Okay, if you change to a Z-score, then it'll be 0, 1, 2, 3 on the right and 0 and negative 1, 2, 3 on the left. Now, what I do, now what you need to do, and I did this and I'm just going to switch screens. And I'll switch back here in just a second. I don't like to draw 15 bell curves per unit. So I go to Google and I Google normal curve. Empirical rule Z score. And I pulled up a bunch of images and I like this one, so I copied it. And of course, what I would tell you to do for the one person that's going to do it, take that and put six on a page in word processor. Put two on page and put one on a page landscape. And then run as many copies as you want for the one person that's going to do it. OK, the rest of y'all are going to bitch about what? Drawing it 15 times. OK, you don't have to. If you didn't, and it takes a lot, you have to push the button like three or four times to print it out and stuff. So it takes a lot of work to print those out. And like I say, I would, some people put four to a page, then two to a page, you know, top and bottom, and then one landscape. And that way you can, you know, have different sizes. And you're going to be drawing that curve probably from here on out. We're going to skip in chapter four and five. We're not going to do the curve, but then we're going to jump back into the curve after chapter five and until chapter 10, we're going to be drawing that curve. So I'm just going to add warning you so you won't be hollering, whining about drawing the curve. I've showed you how not to draw the curve. There is the standard deviation. Now you don't have to write the middle one because that's just try to impress students. OK, so I'm not going to I'm not going to go through that. S is equal to the square root. Of the summation of X minus X bar quantity squared over N minus one. Now the reason I want you to write that formula down is I want you to be able to read it. 
and here in a minute we're going to do it together. We're going to read it together, so that way you won't come up to me and say, well, I don't know how to find standard deviation. Well, there it is. I'm going to teach you to read it so you don't have to ask me 30 different times. Um, I'm sorry, what? This is that definition down in my book. Mm -hmm. Somebody tell me what page it's on. I believe it was on that page I was on, 239 or 2, 129. I think it's on page 129, but I'll turn back and see. So let me go back to the book where we were. And this is on page 132, so let me... Is everybody good on that? Y'all got it written down pretty much? Okay, the empirical rule. And like I say, you can choose to learn it and everything's gonna be good, or you can choose not to learn it and then you'll be in Wineville. I think it's on page 129. Nope, must be on the previous page. 128. There it is, standard deviation. Now, I'm going to I'm going to go away from the book right now, and go to the Excel spreadsheet. Now, the reason I use the Excel spreadsheet is not because I want you to master Excel. That's not the reason I use it. The reason I use the Excel spreadsheet is so I can show everybody on one page how to do everything. If I try to draw it, I'll be all over the place. I'll be using three or four whiteboards. I'm not going to do that, OK? So I just want to make sure everybody understands that. It's recorded, so I don't need anybody telling me at the end of the semester, well, I didn't know I was going to have to master Excel. You don't have to use Excel. I'm showing you how to do it by hand, OK? I'm going to show you how to do it by hand. At the same time, I'm going to show you how to do it by the Excel spreadsheet for those people that know how to use the Excel spreadsheet. Should everybody know how to use the Excel spreadsheet? Uh, hail to the yeah. I would say probably beside the word processor, Excel is probably the most used beside the word processor than any application used in the real world. OK, especially in anywhere that's an office, anywhere that's an office type setting. OK. So I don't know how you can go five years. Well, 9th, 10th, 11th, I, I taught my kids how to use Excel before they even, you know, did anything because it's a very good program. And I don't know how you go through four years of high school and not learn Excel. I really don't. But it is a good program. So if you know how to use it, that's good. If it not, then I will show you how to use your calculator and I'll show you how to use the the uh, stat crunch. So you won't have that excuse of I didn't know how to use Excel. All right, so what we're going to do, Dad, come in, sorry. I'm going to make it big enough where everybody can see it. Let's go with 12. And let's go with grids all around. There. Now everybody should be able to see that. All right. Now, the way I do this, looking at a 15 degree angle from here, the way I do this is I put everything on the board and then we talk about it. So we're going to start with N equals to an odd number. So we're going to start with seven. All right. And I'm going to give you all some X's right here. So these be test grades. Oops, I forgot one thing. I'm a little bit OCD. When it comes to, I want everything to be centered. It drives me crazy. Sorry. And let's let's make this bold to about right there and underlined. And I still don't like the size, so we'll make it a little bit bigger. There. Everybody see that? How about the back row? A Southern Baptist back there. Can you all see that? Good. All right, so let's go with a 75, a 76, an 80, 
an 82, an 85, and I don't forgot how many that's five. Let's go with a 90 and a 92. All right, write those numbers down. They're already in order, so you can't mess that up. So now I want you to do everything you know how to do with those seven numbers. Go back, go back to high school or wherever you learn. And I know everybody knows how to find the mean because y'all all average your grades together. So everybody knows how to find the mean and find out what else, I don't, whatever else you can remember. While you're doing that, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to put the things that we're going to find. Now there's two other things we're going to find, and that is the five number summary and box plot and the normal curve. I'm curious, what are you doing on the calculator? Turn the light and call it how to do it, so you can do all that. Oh, you're one, okay. So they taught y'all how to twirl the calculator on your finger like a basketball. But and, I can't remember. and then we wonder, and then we wonder why we got people that work at cash registers that can't give back change. There's a little bit of too much dependency on calculator in high schools, and it's because the teachers don't want to teach. And I'm sorry, you can tell whoever I said that, it's the truth. Because I've done it when I don't feel like teaching. All right, get your calculators out and do these problems. Okay, uh, there are days that I don't feel like teaching, but I but I don't not teach by hand. I teach you five, four or five different ways. Teaching one way, no, that's not the way to go. So if they taught you how to use a calculator and do it by hand, that's good. Do they usually teach you by hand and calculator? They teach us by hand first, or my good. teacher at least taught me by hand first. Good. And then That's a good way to do it. Yeah, I'm talking about the teachers that just tell you to do everything on calculator. There are some of those out there. Like there, I call them the, the coach of the calculator drill team. First semester I taught, I taught math. It was called 035 way back a long time ago. Now it's called 102. And I, I don't know, that must have been that year that everybody used the calculator. I don't know, but I said, okay, we're going to use the calculator to help help do this. And when I said that, it was like the synchronized drill team at Ethan I, Marine Corps base. It was like, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. everybody was synchronized. I'm like, good golly molly. That was back when, uh, I'm, I'm serious, calculators were very abused. We went through a little trial. When I was in high school and college, you didn't use the calculator. Even though we had them, you didn't use them. Then we went through, you can't go to the bathroom without your calculator. And then we went through what y'all are probably going through, a little bit of both. You do by hand and you do with the calculator. And that's a good thing. Because we got students who can't, if you if you ask them if you if you give them 65 cents they don't know how much change to give you back and that's because they depend on a calculator too much and if i step on your toes i'm sorry this is the truth all right so here we go let's do the mean let's do the mean first and let's 
look at it at a 15 degree angle and I'm going to go right here and you don't have to do this. What do you do for the mean? You add them all up and you divide by what? You divide by seven, good. So if you want to write the formula down, it's the summation of X over N. N is always your biggest number. N is always your hip count. So N is seven grades. Add them all up, divide by seven. Does anybody notice that I carried that out to six digits? Is that a good thing? Yes. You always, and I'm talking in statistics especially, and in engineering, because you don't want a building or a bridge to fall. You always carry to at least four or five digits. Why? Because we live in a world that goes to the second digit, which is the hundreds. All right. So you always want to have a couple of digits past the hundreds. So with your final answer where you're supposed to round, that's where you round. You don't round. You don't say, oh, well, it's 82.9. So I'm just going to put 82.9. And that's what I'm going to use throughout the problem. No, because you got to use that mean in some other stuff. So you need to at least round to six digits throughout the whole problem. Or I do six, but you can do get away with four or more. OK, median. When I say median, what's the first thing you think about? The middle of the road, median in the road. That's what you should think about because I can't think of any other application. All right, so that's the middle. This is a calculated middle. Since N is odd, since that right there, we'll color it, we'll color that some odd color. Look at yucky looking orange. OK, so that seven right there dictates that we just pick the what? The middle number. And there's our middle number right there. When N is odd, you pick the middle number. That's it. Not a lot of work. So you take that 82 and you put that over here. And I'll color that same orange so you know there's three go together. There, N is odd, so you just pick the middle number and that middle number goes right there. Mode. M-O is the first two letters of mode. M-O is the first two letters of most. Mode, most. Which one shows up the most? They ain't there. So you just say not applicable. You can have more than one mode. I put NA. You could put does not exist, which means DNA, DNA. You could say none. You could say non applicable. What do you not put? You don't put zero because you'll always have some smart aleck teacher that goes question mark, question mark, zero is not in the data set. OK, so don't do that. You put a word or you say none or not applicable or there ain't none. Whatever you want to put, but don't put zero. Some students do that. What is the range? That is the highest minus the what? Minus the lowest. The mid range is the average of the highest plus the lowest. So that's going to equal parentheses. The highest or the lowest plus the highest or the highest plus the lowest. Two plus three is the same as three plus two. Plus the lowest. Divided by two. Now I'm going to stop there because we're not ready to go to the variance yet. So I'm going to look at these three numbers right here. I'm going to color that one. I don't like that. I like a more fluorescent. There we go. Like that. I like that. And that one. And that one. Why did I highlight those three 
numbers. I'm sorry, what? Wow, that's right. They're all supposed to be very close together because if those three are all close together, that means your data is pretty tight. That means your numbers are pretty close together. If I throw 105 in there, well, if, okay, how did that happen? Hold on a second. If I throw 105 right here, and I throw a 36 right here, what happens? The numbers start to get out of Wampus. And if you don't know what Wampus is, it's balance. You ever put towels in a washer, washing machine and you get them all on one side, what happens? It sounds really bad. That's called out of Wampus. That's out of balance. Okay. If you get numbers that are not in sync with each other or not in line, the mean, the median, and the mid range is going to tell you because the mean, the median, and the mid range are all measures of what? Most important thing about statistics starts with a C, center. Write that down. The mean, the median, and the mid-range are all measures of center. And they tell you if your data is pretty close. I'm going to have to quit mixing vodka and, and fluoride. All right, here we go. Undo, undo. Did we get our numbers back? There we go. All right, so we got 82, 82, and 84. Those are pretty close. The 82 doesn't change. Why? The 82 doesn't change because when n is 7, when n is odd, that's not calculated. It's observed. And that's why it doesn't change. Now, if your numbers changed right here and here and you were even, then the mean, the median would change. Variance. Let's go back to our handy dandy formula. Now, I'm going to blow this up so everybody can see it. Tell y'all a little secret. Let's get the highlighter out. Y'all see that formula right there that's under the radical? I want you to write that down separately. What's under the radical and then equals VAR. Because the relationship between the variance and the standard deviation, the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So that radical is over the formula for the variance. So the variance is equal to the summation of x minus x bar quantity squared over n minus one. And then the standard deviation is equal to the square root of the VAR. That's the best way to understand it. OK. So the variance is equal to the summation of x minus x bar quantity squared over n minus one. And then the standard deviation is equal to the square root of the VAR. Now we're going to take this. And just so y'all won't. Y'all won't miss it. We're going to go back to the Excel spreadsheet. And. I'll have to bring it in through the spreadsheet because I can't bring it in through the transparency. And I don't know what just happened with my. My people in teams just went away. I don't know what happened. Somebody must have hit file. I don't know. Where'd y'all go? Y'all still there? I guess they're still there. OK, yeah, they're still there. Sorry, I lost y'all for a moment. OK, I don't know what happened. All I did was hit mouse and it take, goes to this screen. It's a conspiracy. And we all know whose fault it is. It's the Russians fault. 
OK, so we're going to insert picture. And bring that in so that way y'all won't be whining about. I don't know how to do it. All right, so I want you to tell me we're going to find the variance now. So that's the formula. And it's kind of small, but you'll live with it. That's why I told you to write it down. I'll try to make it as big as possible. No, no, no. Lord of mercy. OK, there we go. So what are we going to do? First step. What's the first step? Read the formula. Well, since the second or third grade, they always taught you to do what's in the what first. OK, so come on, y'all can talk. What do we do in the parentheses? I can't speak Mongolian. I can't speak Mongolian, so y'all gonna have to articulate the words. And have it on one. OK, or I'm going to teach this. What do we do? OK, the mean is in there. What are we doing? What are we doing with the mean? OK, I'm only in the parentheses. There's only two things in the parentheses. OK, everybody looking inside the parentheses. All right, somebody nine, said nine. the mean. Which one is the mean? The, the, X, X, the, the X bar nine, is the mean. OK, so let's write that down. I didn't know y'all didn't know that. OK, I thought that was OK, so I'm going to change this. I'm going to go to the side of this right here. I could insert, but it's let me see. This is why I don't do it because it takes just it's just too many. Usually there's. Usually there is a special character. There it is. No. Usually there's a there's a probability in statistics, but I'm not going to look for it right now. There we go. Well, it's supposed to. See, that's why I don't. That's why I don't bring it in. It's just. You pass yeah. ask. Did I? Did I pass it? You go up. Y'all see X bar? Back, back in the middle. I don't see it. Oh well. X bar. We'll just put this. X bar. How about that? That's what I usually do. X bar is also your mean, so that's X bar. Now somebody tell me, what are we doing with X bar? From X, right? X minus X bar, that's what that says in parentheses, does it not? X minus X bar, okay, X sub I, if you want to get technical. X minus X bar, what is our X's? Each one of those, See, I got X written on top of the 75 right there. So what do we got to do with the mean? Minus. Minus from every one of those X's. So our next column, if we did this by hand, is going to be called X minus X bar. So I want you to draw that column on your page because I'm showing you how to do it by hand. And it's always good because you may be asked on a standardized test, to fill out a chart, you know, how to find the standard deviation or variance or whatever. I know you'll be asked on the GRE, which is to get into graduate school, you'll be asked to do it by hand. Well, I did, I had to. So that's going to equal. 75 minus that number F4 for those that know what that means. If you don't, then you don't need to be using Excel. And copy down. I'll get there eventually. There we go. 
All right, check your numbers. Now, what are we going to do with X minus X bar? Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, but did the parentheses, now what? Square it, I think that's what I heard. Okay, thank you. Square it, so I'm going to write right here, I'm going to do X, parentheses, X minus X bar, close parentheses, to the second power. So I'm going to take that number and it's going to make all your numbers positive. That's why you do it. To the second power. And copy that down. Now you should have in your notebook, you should have those three columns and you should make a note on what you did so you don't forget when you go home. Because I'm going to give you one night of working with your doing it by hand before we move on to the calculator and stuff. Okay. I'll show everybody how to do it, but I'm doing it in stages. Thursday, I'll show you how to do everything with the calculator and the step crunch. So when you're doing 3.3 .3 homework tonight, or 3.2, I'm sorry. When you're doing 3.2 homework, I don't want you to do every single homework problem tonight. I want you to work on just a few that find, that give you a list of five or seven or eight numbers. And I want you to do one or two of those by hand. That's all, that's, that's the only. Now, if you want to do the other homework, that's fine on 3.3, .3, but I just want you to do a couple by hand. Now, somebody tell me what the funky E looks like. What, I mean, the funky E, what is it? What does it mean? It means summation. And what does sum mean? Add. 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 You're going to add all up. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to make this some kind of weird color like purple or something. And I can't find my highlight. There we go. We're going to go with a. Is there a fluorescent purple? Yeah. I don't like that one. Is that, that's purple right there. And that's going to be the numerator for our variance. And I'm going to hit summation. And that is the numerator for the variance. So right here, Make my handy dandy highlighter. I bet I don't have purple. Now it calls it calls magenta purple. So, and I was informed yesterday that magenta is really not a color. So, I don't know what's up with that. But this right here is the number we just found right here. I'm sorry, but that's magenta and that's purple. I don't know how they call this purple in OK. So I'm going to put that and then I'm going I'm to I'm going to assume that most of y'all know how to do n minus one, but just in case I'm going to do it for you That's six. All right, so here we're going to take. That number. Go away. We're going to take that number equals. The purple number. Divided by six. And that is your variance. And now how do we find the standard deviation? Take the square root of the variance or raise it to the one half power or to the 0.5 power. That's the way I do it. So I'm going to take this number. And I'm going to raise it. To the 0.5 power. 
shift 6.5. That is the standard deviation. Is the standard deviation very important? Yes. On a scale from 1 to 10, with 10 being important, the mean and standard deviation in, in probability and statistics is about a 15. You can't have this course without the mean and the standard deviation. So with that being said, I'm going to go out here and I'm going to tell you what standard deviation means. Mr. Hubert. Yes. Yes. Go ahead. Was that Miss Dennis? Did you have a question? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Um, when you did the, I think it was standard deviation or one of yes. them, you just said something to the fifth power or something okay. like that? 0. 0.5, 42, this number right here, 4280 to the fifth, to the 0. 0.5 power. There it is right there. Right there. I took I took 42.8180.9524. Put that in your calculator and then hit the caret symbol, which is that symbol right there. And then 0. 0.5. And you should get the answer I got. Right, but I'm asking where'd you get the 0. 0.5? Oh, uh, that's the square root. You take the square root. Mm -hmm. see, see, see the radical right here? Yes. That's the square root. Mm -hmm. Square root is equal to, you can take the square root in your calculator, mm -hmm. or you can raise it to the one half power, or you can raise it to the 0.5 power. All three of those give you the same number. Okay. So if you take your calculator, have you got a calculator in front of you? Yes. Okay, hit the square root key, if you got a TI-83 or plus, you hit second. Where's the square? Hold on a second. Let me pull up. Let me pull up my uh, calculator. Let me get rid of this. Pull up my handy dandy calculator. Give me a second, because if you're asking the question, then that means somebody else is asking the question. So give me a second to pull this up. And pull that over and take my handy dandy Excel spreadsheet. OK, so I'm going to hit on and I'm going to hit second and I'm looking at a 15 degree angle, so I cannot even see the square root key. Where is the square root key? There it is. It's above the X to the negative one. There we go. And then I'm going to type in 42.809. With a mouse and at a 15 degree angle, this is very difficult. 524. 524. And enter. All right. Or I could take 42. 42.809. 524 and raise it, caret symbol, parentheses, 1 divided by 2, close parentheses, enter. Or I can raise 42.809524, raise to the 0.5 power and enter. Does that help? OK, yeah. That, so you could do either one. That's just your own personal choice, which one you want to do. I do 0.5 because it's less. It's more simple. So I go back down here. And I hit the mouse key and I hit it again and it says that I love Tri-County Tech. And I say equals this number raised to the 0.5 power. OK, if I good. Now, this is the spread. What in the world are you talking about? You remember me telling you? Down here is your goal to fill out these numbers down here. 
Well, zero is your mean. Now this is a Z score. When you got these whole numbers right here, those are Z scores. If you don't, if you're not asking for Z scores, you hit the mean. So I'm gonna put the mean in the middle. So I'm gonna go back to my Excel spreadsheet and I'm gonna go down here. I'm gonna delete this if you don't mind. I'm gonna delete this. And I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna put the mean in the middle. So I'm gonna highlight this, that that fluorescent red, I meant fluorescent green, cause this important number. And I'm gonna put it right here in the middle. Equals that number. I'm sorry, not that number, the mean. I'm sorry, I had a brain bubble there for a minute. There we go. Everybody with me? The mean goes right there in the middle. Now, somebody look at your handy dandy. Somebody tell me what I'm doing on the right side of the zero or the mean. What am I doing? Am I adding or am I subtracting? You add. I'm adding one, two, three, okay? I'm adding. So to the right, write this down, to the right of the mean, you're gonna add the standard deviation. Write that down. To the right of the mean, you're gonna add the standard deviation. So I'm gonna take 82.85, and I'm going to add the standard deviation, and for those of you that know that know uh, uh, Excel, I'm gonna hit F4 to lock it, and I'm gonna go three three standard deviations to the right. There's one, there's two, and there's three. Now, if I add on the right, what do you think I'm gonna do on the left? Subtract. Subtract. Good job. I like how y'all interact. It makes the class a whole lot faster. All right, so I'm going to say equals this guy minus the standard deviation, F4. And what you need to be doing in your, in your notes right now is you need to be calculating these numbers right here, these six numbers. You need to be doing that right now and you need to be putting a note what you're doing. I'm adding the standard deviation on the first one. I'm adding the standard deviation on the second one. I'm adding the standard deviation on the third one. Think of whole numbers. 82.85, 82 that's like 83, right? Okay, what's 83 plus seven? 90. What's 90 plus seven or what's 89 plus seven? 96. What's 96 plus 7? 106. Uh, yeah, I'll be around 106. That's 102. Those we're doing decimals instead of whole numbers. And then backwards. What's 83 minus 7 or 6 and a half? Or what, let's just do 6. What's 83 minus 6? 76. 76. What's 76 minus 6? 70. There's 70 right there. And then 70 minus 6, 63. Okay, so you're adding the standard deviation on the right and you're subtracting it on the left. Now the empirical rule comes in. Let's see if this will work. I don't know if it'll work or not. I suck. Hold on a minute. I don't want to. Let's see. Let's go with a straight line. Okay, there we go. There's the bottom line. And I'm going to hit a. There we go. And I'm a little bit off. But it's for instructional purposes. Here's your mean. 
There's your first negative, first standard deviation. Second standard deviation. And third standard deviation. Now let's fill out the empirical rule. 95% of the population is normal, right? And that's going to fall between two standard deviations. Okay. Now, what's outside of two standard deviations? Well, you've got, let's go with a, this is unusual. So for this student that made these grades of 75 to 92, what if that student made a 64? Would that be normal? What if that student made 101? That wouldn't be normal either, based on their numbers. And then, of course, in red, and I never hardly do anything in red, what is this right here called? That's called the outliers. So what if this student made a 60? Well, then I would know that something was wrong with that student. What is the red call? Outlier. Outliers, okay. Oh, that's the Michael Jordan. Michael thing. Jordans and the Tiger Woods and the and the six foot second graders. Mm -hmm. Ones that, you know, I mean, names Andre the Giant. That was an outlier. I don't know. I can't think of things right off the top of my head. People that are just, yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, what? Yeah, because of rounding, yes. Now, you need to, well, for this, for this problem, I'll tell you what you do. For this problem, if you're doing it by hand, take your handy-dandy calculator. I should have told you this before. I'm sorry. What? They just put this in here this, this semester. Yesterday, I did this, and I used these pins, and guess what? I didn't even have batteries in them. 2050, one day we'll have it. And they're not configured. Just like when I hit this button right here, that that little that's not supposed to happen. But they don't have it configured correctly. I don't know what's but I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm I'm glad that the projector's in here, okay? Because we just have a whiteboard if it wasn't. So Anyway, I'm not going to, I'll shut up. Okay, let me go back and I don't know why it's doing that. It's not supposed to do that. Uh, let me pull up the, let me get rid of this. It's not going to let me, it's going to erase that. I don't know why. Okay, if you got a calculator, I got mine on float. But since I went to six digits, hit mode, turn it on, hit mode, and go to where it says float, and put it on six digits, and it will do, it'll round like mine, like the spreadsheet's rounded. Okay? Now, most of the time, the best place to put it is on float. But if you want to carry everything to six digits, put it on six. That's a safe, that's a safe thing to be. Okay. So now if I take uh square root, or let's let's do it irrational that way. Uh six raised to the 0. 0.5 or two raised to the 0. 0.5, that should give you six digits. Yeah. See? It'll give you six digits. And that way you'll get the same answer I get on the so yours may not be you have a TI 83 with you? What do you, what is yours set to? Okay, hit mode and what is your digits sitting on? 
Hey, what was that one that Okay, yeah, that's why you got a different number because everything was one. All right, so that's that. Question so far. Okay, now let's go back. And I don't know if I can get the bell curve back. Yeah, there we go. Every time I hit the mouse, it's going to take it off. But anyway, that's called the normal distribution and the empirical rule. Now, those percentages, make sure you can draw those percentages on there. 34, 34, 13.5, 13.5, uh, 2.35, 2.35, and 0.15 or 0.15. I think I've got one off. You just look on the just look on the sheet question so far. That's how you find the mean, median, mode, range, standard deviation, and all that good stuff. Okay. All right, let's do another one. Let's do one now with 10 instead of 7. So this one's going to be even. All right, so I'm going to go up here and we're going to do, we'll do ages. So n is equal to 10. We're going to go with 18, 18, 18, 19, 19, 20, 20, 21, 22, 23, 25, 26. How many is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, 12 is good. 12 is even. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to put mean, median, mode, and all that stuff. I want you to be calculating everything you can calculate now. Now that I've shown you how to do everything, see how much you can calculate by yourself. Because this is the type of questions I'm going to ask on the test. Now, are you going to have to do everything? No. Most of the time, you're only going to be asked to find two things. But if you do each one of these questions like I do it, then by the test, you'll be ready for the test. Mean, median, mode, range, mid-range, variance, and standard deviation. All right, so it's 8.58 right now. Give you all two minutes. Okay, I'll give y'all one more minute because everybody's still writing, so I'm going to give you one more minute.
All righty. So I got to find my mean first. So I'm going to summation of all these numbers divided by 12. Okay, now it's not doing six digits. Why is it doing six digits? Does it cut off at 0.75? Somebody tell me. Okay, that's why. All right, so in this case, you don't have to worry about rounding because the actual number does round to a specified number. Okay, now I'm going to find the median. So I count four down. One, two, three, four. And these two right here are my middle numbers. So I'm going to highlight those in that weird color, that orange, that yellowish orange. Since this is 12, since it's even, and I'm going to take the average of those two numbers. So I'm going to take 19 plus 20. I have all my teeth, or mostly all my teeth, and I got running water at home and degrees. I know that it's going to be 19.5. I know that, okay? I don't need somebody to tell me that it's 19.5. The reason I'm going through the motions is because sometimes you have two numbers that you can't do in your head, okay? So that's why I show everybody, you know, the formula. And that's just the same as the mid-range. You take the two numbers, and you divide them by two. Let's take an average of those two numbers. Now, right now, that 19.5, I'm going to take, I don't have a, do I have a, let's see. I'm sorry, what? Oh, did I not go four? Okay, sorry. Did these two? Okay. OK, the time to tell me I made a mistake is not after I've finished. OK, all right. The time to tell me I made a mistake is why I'm doing <laughs> it. All right, because then all the Bubba's, they go, yeah, yeah, man, I thought you did something wrong. And he don't even know what day it is. So please don't do that. That irritates me. All right, let me go back. Sorry, I counted wrong. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Is that right? One, two, three, four, five. Should be these two. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Okay. And like I say, at this angle, it's kind of hard sometimes. There we go. And of course, we all know that the average of 20 and 20 is 20, but I'm going to go through and add the first one plus the second one, and you don't have to do it in order because addition is commutative divided by two. Now that 20 right there is not one of these 20s. That 20 is actually right there. And you have to use that blue dot when you're doing the five number summary. Okay. And we'll get to the five number summary Thursday. Because we're not going to get to it today because I don't want to. All right. So that's it. That 20 right there, I'm going to put a dot right there. And I want you to signify that that 20 is not this 20 and it's not that 20. It's between the two 20s. Because if you had two different numbers, 19 and 30, then the, the average of those two would not be either one of them, it would be in the middle. So that's why I'm putting that blue dot there because you gotta, you're going to need that when you find your five number sum. Okay. So now let's do the mode. Well, I think the one that shows up the most is 18, doesn't it? Okay, now it's doing what we were doing the other day. Okay, there we go. OK, when you hit mouse, it disappears everything on the screen. OK, so I'm sorry. Mode is 18. Remember, that's observed, so you don't have to calculate it. Range is equal to the highest minus the what? Minus the lowest. 
mid range is equal to the average of the highest and lowest. So that's going to be equal to parentheses. The lowest plus the highest or the highest plus the lowest because addition is commutative. Divided by two. The reason I keep saying that is because some of y'all will come up to me before the test and say, does it matter if I add the lowest plus the highest or the highest plus the lowest? Doesn't matter because two plus three is the same as three plus two. You don't have to worry about addition or multiplication. OK, so it doesn't matter. That's why I keep saying. It. All right, Vari variance. So we're going to go over here and we're going to say equals. 18 minus. That number and for those that use Excel, I'm going to lock that number. And copy it down. And now what am I going to do? I'm going to square those numbers to make them all positive. And then I'm going to add those numbers up. And that number is my numerator for my variance. And I'm going to put that in that purple. So our variance is that number divided by what? 11. Good job. Somebody listened. And now I'm going to take the square root of that. So that's going to be equal to that raised to the what? 0.5 power. And remember, that's our what? That's our critical thinking question. What if our standard deviation is lower? Is that good or bad? If the standard deviation is lower, then what does that say about the spread? The spread is lower, which is, is that good or bad? Spread is good. I mean, low spread is good. That means your number is closer together. A big spread means what? Your numbers are further apart. That's what the word spread means. Close together or further apart. Lower is good in statistics when you're talking about spread or standard deviation. Write that down because that is a standardized test question. You'll be looking at two pictures of a, of a curve and it'll say which one has the lower standard deviation. And the one that has the, 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 the marks closer together is the one with the lower standard deviation. Let's look at our green numbers. 20.75, 20, and 22. What would y'all say on those numbers? They're pretty good. And then the standard deviation, we use a different green for that one. We use that regular, use that color. And now we're ready to do our, our empirical rule. I wish I could get it to. OK, whatever. I was trying to get it. I can't get anything. There we go. There we go. All right, so now I'm going to go over here. And I'm just going to put the middle number right here. And that's equal to our mean. I'm sorry, right there. And I'm going to color that, that fluorescent green. And then I'm going to add on the right. I'm going to add 20.75 plus my standard deviation. I'm going to hit F4 for those that use Excel. And I'm going to copy that two more places. And on the left, I'm going to subtract. And hit F4.
Say again. Take the square root of the variance or raise it to the 0.5 power or one half power. You remember when I pulled up the calculator and did it three ways? Whoever asked that, I don't know who asked it. I think it's so. Okay, good. And there is your empirical rule. So now you just draw a, a line and I, hopefully y'all can draw a curve. I'm going to draw a line right here. And then we'll draw a curve. And there's that, 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 that. And we know that it's easier this way because you all can't see through muddy water. If I was standing up here, you couldn't see. So two standard deviations. Can't see through my big head either. There we go. 95% of the of the of the population is normal. My daughter used to say normal when she was little. There we go. 95% falls within, and you got, and you should be able to fill out the empirical rule. 34, 34, 13.5, 13.5. And then we take the, what color did I color the, there we go. This is unusual. And that is 2.35. I like these styluses is better than the old ones. Kind of helps to have a battery in them though. And then what's on the outside? Outliners. Outlier. So if this was a class, let's say this was a class of mine, and these are the ages of my students, what if I brought in a 10-year-old? And of course that would be an outlier. Based on this, these, based on the statistics, lowercase s, that I brought in. I brought in 10, 12 people, and if I was to bring in a 10-year-old student, that would be an outlier. If I was to bring in a 53-year-old student like myself, that would be an outlier. So fish, the spread is low, that's good. The three numbers are close, that's good. You throw one, throw one monkey wrench in it. Please don't, it's gonna disappear, watch. I don't understand it, folks, but you put a, Let's put a 53 year old in there and everything goes out. Of, OK. What? I'm, I'm about ready to throw this mouse across the room. 53 <coughs> and enter. What happened to the three numbers? They're not close any what anymore. And what did the spread do? When the numbers got out of whack, what did the spread do? An increase. Is that something y'all need to be picking up? Yes. If the numbers are in line, the spread is going to be what? Low. If the numbers are all over the place, the spread is going to be high. Or the vertical or the the, uh, standard deviation. So let's put a 10 year old in here. If the keyboard will let me. Woo, 22, 20, 31. Look at that standard deviation. Went from a two to a 10 with just two different ages. That's what you should be able to tell when you finish this unit, you should be able to not just regurgitate the mean and standard deviation, but you should be able to what? 
put in a sentence what it means. And if you have numbers that are out of whack, it's going to show with the mean, median, mid-range, and the standard deviation is going to be increased versus if the, if the numbers all were in line. So let me put a 18 back up here. I don't know what the original number was. Is it 18? And let's change this one to a 25. What was it? I'm going to change it to a 25. And watch the standard deviation. Is the standard deviation 2.5? Is that less than what we had? Say, and that's just changing one age. Change it back to 26. Is that what we had originally? Yes, no, maybe 26. Is that what we had originally? Okay. So hopefully you're learning something about the numbers, not just regurgitating them, because if you're sitting in a class and you're just regurgitating numbers, that's not, you're not learning anything. Okay. Question on this. Okay, some of y'all are already start convulsing. I heard some of y'all putting your books together, which is rude, but I heard some of y'all doing that, which class is over in like, what, eight minutes? I still got eight minutes, but some of y'all were convulsing. So since y'all were convulsing, I'll go ahead and shut her down today because we're not, I don't want to move into five number summary yet. I'm going to do five number summary Thursday. Now five number summary is in like 3.5. Okay, so don't worry about it right now. I'm going to cover it, and by the time I get through next Tuesday, probably Tuesday or Thursday of next week, I'll be kind of finishing up the unit. What does that mean? Finishing up the unit. What does that mean? Some of you people that have been bouncing off the walls wondering, what does that mean? There's going to be a test coming up. So some of y'all is bouncing off the walls, wondering when we're going to have a test. It's probably going to be after next week. Probably Thursday, I'll be talking about a test, which means your chapter three homework will be coming up due. If you notice, chapter two is already due. Okay, some of you procrastinators that are going to wait till chapter three to do your homework, it's already due. So I'm sorry. We already finished chapter two and one. So if you come up here whining, that means you're a procrastinator because you were waiting until we got to chapter three to do chapter one and two. You had your hand up. I'm sorry. What was your question? Um, I got it now. You sure? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, let me call the roll and remember. Okay. What else? What's next week? Are you coming to this classroom next week? Okay. That means everybody needs to get what? Teams. Now, I, I told y'all how to do that two weeks before the semester starts. Sir? Tuesday, yeah, Thursday's the last day in here. Okay, unless I change something. And right now, I don't think it's gonna change. I don't think I, I can't get my mama to stay because they get the fight, so I can't do that. So we'll just be at home for the rest of the you can, you can, okay, let me address that. Yes, you can, you can call from home, Make sure your stuff's on the computer ready to go, okay? Or you can come up here. If you got a class afterwards, you can sit in this classroom. Or you can sit downstairs or wherever you want to. You can sit outside the parking lot and use the Wi-Fi if you want to. Everybody, you can, you can team in from anywhere on your computer or your phone. Everybody got that? Okay. All right. Let me call the roll. Let me shut down the recorder and the presenter. And stop.